The authorities were called to the clinic after two patients reported seeing Saiyans inject bleach into patients' dialysis lines. Several syringes used by her then tested positive for bleach. What is up you guys? Welcome back to I Seen That Reaction Channel. I'm your boy, Mr. I Seen That. And if you're here for the first time, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that bell notification. That way, you can be notified the next time your boy, Mr. I Seen That, drops his next reaction video. So, in this reaction video, we gonna be reacting to eight nurses going wrong and just killing somebody <laughs> I mean you you can't really trust people man you know what I'm saying and it's messed up that we have individuals go out here and go get certifications they go to school they get this knowledge and some of them may just be mentally out of there already but some of them, I don't know, something just snap and then they just feel like they just want to take people up out of here on their own free will. <laughs> man, it's crazy, man. So, yeah, I, I don't know, man. And then it's like, I guess for a lot of men out there, a lot of dudes don't like going to hospitals, man. Like it just just freak them out and I am one of them dudes man I do not like hospitals man I, I can't stay up in that joint it just man because hey they human they went to school they study but they could mess some stuff up too man <laughs> and then on top of that man you know the medical field is a you know what I mean <laughs> So sometimes, man, it, it, it's not meant for you to come up out of there. <laughs> so, man, we just gonna go ahead and jump into this video, man, and see what's going on. Number eight, Elizabeth Wettlaufer. Between 2007 and 2016, Canadian nurse Elizabeth Wettlaufer killed and injured roughly 14 people under her care. Wow. She first found employment at Care Saint Care, an elderly home in Woodstock. While there, she started injecting patients with fatal doses of insulin. Her first victim was 84 years old James Wilcox, a veteran of World War II and a father. So, she up here just, just, <laughs> she in here just giving people the needle, man. Like, this dude, 84 years old. What gives you the right to just go ahead and send this man to the afterlife? Now, I know in some cases, some individuals, they might be like, hey, man, I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of being here. Just go ahead and take me out. Was that the case, though? But all of these people, man, she up here, <laughs> man, she here going crazy. Six. During her time at the home, Wedlaufer struggled with alcoholism and substance abuse. She killed at least six more people at Care and Care before she left the facility in 2014. Some of her victims survived, and Wedlaufer would later plead guilty to attempted murder in those cases. After Care and Care, she killed another patient and injured two others as she sporadically found work in Ontario. In 2016, she entered a drug rehabilitation program at a psychiatric hospital in Toronto, where she confessed her crimes to the staff. The police were notified, and Wettlaufer was arrested. She was subsequently sentenced to eight consecutive life terms. In her confession, the woman claimed that she knew the difference between right and wrong, but added that she had uncontrollable urges. She said that God, the devil, or some other unknown force or entity wanted her to kill. Before taking a life, she could hear herself laughing and claimed that it felt like a cackling from the pit of hell. The laughter she added wasn't audible, but rather a feeling in her chest. For her crimes, Wettlaufer is regarded as being among the worst serial killers 
in the history of Canada. Do you think these people died peacefully? Did they struggle at all? Um, all the people you've talked about so far died peacefully, in my opinion. And I am sorry. I'm sorry for what the families went through at the time, and I'm extremely sorry for what they're going to do. It's awful. Number seven, Niels Hugel. Judging from the total number of victims he's suspected to have claimed, former nurse Niels Hergel is the most prolific serial killer in the history of peacetime Germany. In 1999, he started work at a clinic in Oldenburg. It wasn't long before the facility started to notice a sharp increase in resuscitations and inexplicable deaths, the vast majority of which had occurred while Hergel was on duty. The nurse was constantly present in emergency situations. In fact, it was Hergel who'd injected the patients with ajmaline, sotolol, calcium chloride, or other substances. He'd done so according to his prosecutors. Man, what is going on, man? <laughs> man, this cat, you gotta be smarter than that, man. Everybody dying on your shift. When you're not at work, everything's cool. But when you clock in, people just start dying. <laughs> and what's going on in your life, man? You just coming to work, man. Just, just, just killing people, man. At some point, these individuals, man, they get a rush from it. They like it. And, and they get addicted to it, man. Like, oh, let me see who's the next person I could kill. Let me see if the next person I could. You know what I mean? It's just sad, man. Terrible, man. Y'all get what y'all deserve straight up. Out of boredom and the desire to display his resuscitation skills. In 2002, he transferred to Delmenhorst Clinic. Again, emergencies relating to arrhythmia or sudden drops in blood pressure started to spike. A police investigation was launched in 2005 after staff caught Hergel sabotaging a patient's injection with Ajmaline. Hergel was arrested and initially sentenced to life in prison for the murder of six patients. The inquiry into his activity as a nurse continued and in 2019 he was convicted of a total of 85 murders. Further oh. investigative efforts revealed 300 possible victims spanning a period of 15 years. Number six, Kimberly Clark Sainz. Shortly after Kimberly Clark Sainz was hired as a nurse at a DaVita dialysis clinic in Lufkin, Texas, the facility saw a dramatic rise in patients becoming ill during treatment. A number of them had gone into cardiac arrest, which is extremely rare for dialysis patients. In April of 2008, the authorities were called to the clinic after two patients reported seeing Sainz inject bleach into patients' dialysis lines. Whoa. Several syringes used by her then tested positive for bleach. When questioned by the police before the officers even mentioned the substance, Sayans claimed she'd used bleach to clean dialysis lines. Further research revealed that in April, she'd been present at every incident in which a patient had died. Moreover, her hard drive revealed Google searches concerning the lethality of bleach. Oh, as yeah. part of the investigation, an analytical <laughs> chemist proved oh, that the bleach called. had entered the patient's bloodstream, causing red blood cells to explode and release iron, which sent them into cardiac arrest. Sayans was sentenced to life, plus 60 years for killing five patients Ooh. and injuring five others, although she was believed to have been involved in many other incidents. Number five, Piet... <laughs> hold on, let go back. Hey, hold on. Hey... Right here. <laughs> Who does she look like? She looked like that uh that that actress uh Melissa McCartney or whatever. <laughs> hey man, she could play this part. I wonder if there's somebody who's gonna do a story on this chick. That would probably be dope. Uh, but she looked just like Melissa McCartney, if that's her name. <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about. Leave a comment below. <laughs> hey, this chick over here put bleach up. Man. And these people up in dialysis, man. Yeah, you deserve to die. Believed to have been involved in 
many other incidents. Number five, Pieter Zelenka. From May to December of 2006, Czech nurse Pieter Zelenka killed seven people under his care and attempted to murder 10 others. At the time, he was working at a clinic in Havlichkovobrod, about 60 miles southeast of Prague. Zelenka administered lethal injections in which he used heparin, a blood thinning drug that caused massive internal bleeding. The main theory is that he killed his patients as a twisted test for doctors at the clinic, whom he didn't believe were proficient enough to discover his crimes. He confessed upon his arrest and, in February of 2008, was sentenced to life in prison. Number 4. Kristen Gilbert Massachusetts nurse Kristen Gilbert was convicted in 2001 for the murder of four patients at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Northampton. She had started work at the center in the late 1980s. Before long, other nurses jokingly called her the Angel of Death. Due to the high number of deaths that occurred on her watch, Gilbert would inject her patients' intravenous bags with massive amounts of epinephrine, and once they went into cardiac arrest, she'd attempt to resuscitate them. She'd create these crisis situations to display her perceived proficiency as a nurse, but also to attract the attention of then-boyfriend Justin Perot. He was a Veterans Affairs police officer, and hospital procedure dictated he had to be present in case of an emergency. In the midst of mounting suspicions, Gilbert left the hospital in 1996. Afterwards, she checked herself into psychiatric hospitals at least seven times. In 1998, she called in a bomb threat at the VA Medical Center in retaliation to her former colleagues and Perot. She was arrested at which point her past crimes were investigated by the police. Perot told the authorities that Gilbert had confessed the murder to him during a call from the psychiatric ward. VA staff linked Gilbert to over 300 medical emergencies and up to 350 deaths. She was only convicted for four of them and ultimately sentenced to life imprisonment. Number three, Edson Isidoro Guimaraes. In 1999, a hospital porter at the Salgado Fio Hospital in Rio de Janeiro witnessed nurse Edson Isidoro Guimaraes as he fatally injected a patient with potassium chloride. Guimaraes was arrested and several suspicious deaths were subsequently linked to him. The man who'd come to be known as the nurse of death confessed to five murders. He claimed that he'd chosen patients, mainly those suffering from AIDS, who were in irreversible comas. Guimaraes said that he was at peace with the killings as he'd spared the patients and their families of prolonged pain. He was convicted of four killings. See, that's what I'm saying, like... Some of these patients, if they know they probably going to die and they tired of suffering, they might tell the nurse, like, hey, man, just give me something to get me up out of here. You know what I mean? And some of these nurses feel like that they doing justice for, you know, they giving these people what they ask for. That's the type of, you know, way they want to uh, leave this earth. And, then, and they asking the nurse, just please, please just... You know what I mean? You see the movies, you see the sitcoms, it happen like, you know what I mean? ...and sentenced to 76 years in prison. It's Woo! believed that from January the 1st to May the 4th of 1999, he was responsible for up to 131 victims. Rio's Secretary for Public Security suspected that money may have also been a motive for Guimaraes' crimes as every time he reported a death to a funeral home, he was paid $60. <laughs> Today's topic was requested by April Matthews and Melinda Van Stand. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe. And let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Jane Toppen American serial killer Jane Toppen, active from 1885 to 1901 in Massachusetts, was born Honora Kelly into a nightmarish household. Her father was an abusive alcoholic who, according to rumors of his mental instability, ultimately sold his own eyelids shut while working as a tailor. Kelly spent a few years in an orphanage before being placed as an indentured servant in the home of the Toppen family. She took the name Jane Toppen and began training as a nurse. She would come to be known as Jolly Jane because of her positive disposition 
Beyond the facade, however, lay a disturbed serial killer. Toppin experimented with morphine and atropine on sick elderly patients. She altered their prescribed doses and would get a sexual thrill from seeing them drift in and out of consciousness. Yep. Toppin fondled her victims as they died and, according to one report, looked into their eyes trying to understand the inner workings of their souls. Her killing spree continued after she became a private nurse. In 1901, she moved in to take care of the elderly Alden Davis after the passing of his wife. Unbeknownst to him, it was Toppen who had killed her. Within weeks, she fatally poisoned Davis, his adult daughters, and his sister. She was detected following a toxicology report from her latest victim. Toppen confessed to 31 murders but was concretely linked to 12. At one point, Toppen was quoted as saying that she wanted to have killed more people, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. Number 1. Charles Cullen During his 16-year activity as a nurse in New Jersey, Charles Cullen killed numerous patients, mainly by injecting them with insulin, digoxin, and epinephrine. Cullen dropped out of high school and after joining the Navy, passed the rigorous psychological exams necessary for working on a submarine. While he was serving aboard the Woodrow Wilson, an officer found him at the missile controls, wearing scrubs, gloves, and a surgical mask. Cullen gave no reason for his behavior. Ever since he was a child, Cullen had fantasized about death and suicide. During his time in the Navy, he'd be admitted to psychiatric wards on several occasions for trying to take his own life. After he was medically discharged, he started working as a nurse and murdered his first victims in 1988 at St. Barnabas. Due to a national nurse shortage, Cullen was able to move between hospitals whenever suspicions arose. He was detected in 2003 while working at the Somerset Medical Center. The police kept him under surveillance and, through a fellow nurse wearing a wire, found enough evidence for a probable cause arrest. Cullen agreed to cooperate with the authorities in exchange for them not pursuing the death penalty. He confessed to killing 40 people under his care and was given 18 consecutive life sentences. Cullen claimed that he'd overdosed terminal patients to spare them from going into cardiac or respiratory arrest. Yet, not all of his victims were terminal and many were on the mend. He also said that he'd lived his life in a fog and blacked out during most of the murders. Experts who've investigated his activity believe that he may have been responsible for 400 deaths, making him the most prolific serial killer in recorded history. Oh. Hey man, that drunk crazy right there, man. <laughs> man, y'all already knew that man was crazy, and then y'all let that man still. Man, come on, man. 400 people, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, some people just be so quick to go to the hospital and the doctor, man. You gotta think about that, man. It's crazy people all around man and it's crazy people that have jobs and work in these different fields man and it's a lot of mentally disturbed people that work in the medical field man so you just shouldn't be all willy-nilly to just go on up in that joint you know what i mean you gotta think about stuff like that but hey it is what it is man y'all just gotta you know try to be safe out there and if you're here for the first time Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification. That way you can be notified the next time your boy, Mr. I Seen That, drops his next reaction video. Until the next time, y'all know the vibes. Ooh.